many economists among us. Who does that mean? How come? Well, I, I, think, I think it's about time. Um, I think the reality is that uh, economics has been one of the reasons why nature, that is biodiversity and ecosystems, have suffered because the world of economics considers them externalities. So when people are talking about a new approach, does, is, does it also in, in, include economics? It has to. It has to. You see, let's take a simple example. Corporator somewhere in, in a German lander, or for, for that matter, in an Indian state, um, has to make a quick decision because his rule book says you must create employment. So he has an application for someone, 1,300 jobs, uh, potentially created. Well, what's the downside of clearing off the forest area, which is going to be provided for the industry or the factory, which creates those 1,300 jobs? He doesn't know. And he would like to know, but there's nothing that tells him that. So if you like, you've got a weighing scale there in operation, where only one side has a weight on it, and the other side has something, and there's no weight. So but apparently you try no. to put a, a price, or sorry, kind of, uh, how can I put a value mm. on nature? What is it? What is that value? Yeah. And how, how, how are you going about it? If what we're saying is that there is a value to the systems that come, to the ecosystem services that come to human beings. And if we are careless about the way we manage that, and if we are uh, not measuring them, which is the case today, then we will lose them. And with that, we lose the Earth species. With that, we lose the Earth's environments. And we lose the risk. We lose ourselves, actually. Uh, you're involved in a study. Yes. We need to do exactly that value mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. nature. Can yeah. you tell us a little bit more about yeah. it? Sure. OK. So the study came in two parts. The first study was to understand and appreciate and size up how much is, in money equivalent terms, the value of services that come to us. Exactly. So Supposing we had a city where there were no parks and no gardens, you'd have to provide investment for some form of entertainment for people, right? They need that entertainment, they need that space. Just think of the money you'd have to spend building that entertainment. And there are so many such examples. You can do comparisons, you can do valuations. You can work out even the costs of health, in other words, pollution causing loss of health, and what is the cost of repairing that health, i.e. the additional medical bill of that. So these are all things which are calculable. You know the value yes. of, let's say, nature now. Mm -hmm. Does it really mean that everything is solved and maybe all the problems Not are at finished? all. Not at all. In fact, the first thing you need in communicating value is the value itself. So what we are doing, the phase one was about working out values. Phase two is about completing that exercise. So we've got the value of the services of forests. Now we need to work out the values of services of the oceans. And guess what? The whole of phase two is about communicating and outreach. We, so we've been talking about taking action, a new approach, a new framework. Yes. So this really fits into that new framework. This new framework is what it's all about. You know, we have to create, uh, help create. Now, if we talk about GDP accounting, right? This is classical GDP. That was my earlier work in India, the Green Accounting for Indian States project. It was about recasting GDP so that you include the value of the flows of nature coming from forests and, and water and so on and so forth. Uh, but you also include the losses. So you include the additions that you need to add to GDP, and you subtract the bits that are being lost. What kind know. of impact does it have on the poor? So we did a calculation for India, just to prove the point. We did a calculation, we had the numbers, to show that this, the GDP that we should look at is all of these. It's subsistence farming, it's animal husbandry, it's non-timber forest product gathering, it's coastal fisheries. Add them up, and then see what would happen to that GDP of the poor if you subtracted the flows of nature. And guess what? You lose 60% of them. Actually, if you really are serious about GDP accounting, and guess what, you need to work out how much of the GDP of the poor comes from nature today. So that is a very direct and important application of our work. A final word, maybe? Yeah. A final word, you know, nature's value is infinite, but nature's services have finite value to you. But there's no point using them and consuming them for free and not recognizing the value that they deliver to you. Because if you keep doing that, the net result is going to be at some point they will stop.